Carbon is a very important element for life on Earth, and without it, life would not be possible. The carbon atoms are essential for all living organisms because carbon is the building block for all organic molecules. Oh my goodness! And the cycle of carbon is a global cycle and it can be broken down into two sections. There is the short-term cycle and the long-term cycle. We will first take a look at the short-term cycle. The short-term cycle represents the journey of carbon from a time period of a few days to thousands of years. The short-term cycle begins when plants and phytoplankton take carbon from the atmosphere via photosynthesis. The plants and phytoplankton use the CO2 for growth and respiration, and then release O2 and small amounts of CO2 back into the atmosphere. The carbon then gets distributed throughout the food chain because the primary consumers eat the primary producers, such as a giraffe eating leaves, and the secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. Animals, even griffins, use O2 for respiration and growth and then release CO2 back into the atmosphere. The same process occurs in the ocean. Phytoplankton uses CO2 for respiration and growth and are then eaten by zooplankton. The zooplankton are then eaten by a bigger fish. Carbon is then transferred from plants to the soil when leaves and trees die and decompose. Plants can also transfer carbon to the soil throughout their root systems. Animals transfer carbon to the soil when they die and decompose. Carbon can go in many different directions once it decomposes into the soil. It can be carried by streams and rivers to become part of the soil on the ocean floor. It can be used by primary producers in the ocean, or it can stay in the soil. Now we will illustrate the long-term cycle, which describes the transfer of carbon to and from rocks. This cycle is important because there is more carbon contained within the Earth's crust and rocks than in the atmosphere, biomass, and ocean combined. The long-term cycle of carbon begins when carbon is carried to oceans via streams and rivers. The carbon becomes a solid part of, the, of sedimentary rocks through a process called sedimentation. This process happens mainly on the ocean floor. Once the carbon becomes embedded within the sedimentary rocks of the ocean, it travels deeper into Earth due to the subduction of Earth's plates. Subduction occurs when one of Earth's tectonic plates is forced below another plate. That plate then travels deep into Earth's layers, where temperatures are much higher and so is the pressure. Due to the heat and pressure, and the carbon transforms into a fossil fuel. Carbon is freed from Earth's rocks through a couple of ways. One way is through volcanoes. Molten rock from deep within the earth comes to the surface and within that molten rock is a large amount of carbon. When the volcano erupts, the carbon is returned to the atmosphere and into the ocean as shown in this video. The main way carbon is freed from rocks and returned to the atmosphere is through the burning of fossil fuels. Companies extract fossil fuels from deep within the earth through mining and drilling. The, po the fossil fuels are then burned and they release large amounts of energy and CO2. The burning of fossil fuels is one of the main energy sources for many countries. Another way carbon escapes from the Earth's rocks is through hydrothermal vents in the ocean floor. Hydrothermal vents are like underwater volcanoes. Molten rock from deep within the Earth comes to the surface and erupts through the hydrothermal vent. The carbon within the rock is then released into the ocean. Carbon is strongly related to the global warming debate because carbon is a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases prevent sunlight from escaping our atmosphere into space. So without greenhouse gases, our planet would be uninhabitable because it would be too cold. However, because of cars and factories and other machines that burn CO2, the level of CO2 in the atmosphere has increased greatly. Before industry was invented, the level of CO2 in the atmosphere was 180 parts per million to 280 parts per million. That level of CO2 today is 380 parts per million. Scientists worry that there will be too much CO2 in the atmosphere, and the extra CO2 will raise the temperature of Earth, causing many problems. Deforestation is another cause of global warming. Because so many trees are being cut down, there are less plants to take the CO2 out of the atmosphere, leading to a rise in CO2.